Hello and welcome to another 3ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us as you do each and every day. Thank you for your love and your prayers and financial support of 3ABN as we endeavor to take this great gospel of the kingdom into all the world. I have my co-host today, Miss Yvonne. Yeah. And uh, my wife. And listen, we have an exciting program today. We do. And, we really and, do. And I can't wait to introduce the guest and yeah. the talk and for our audience at home. They'll, they'll want to be a part of this. Absolutely. The one thing that you learn after 34 years, you know what 3ABN viewers and what really reaches mm. those. And mm -hmm. those are the people that have the vision to take the three angels' messages to the world. Yes. And uh, It's amazing what God is doing, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. The it timing. Is. The timing. Which is... God's timing, He's always on time. That's right. Right? To that's take that's right. Word. Never, no, never the late. The from your sermon the other that, day. That's, that's He's right. He's always on time, never late. Say God is faithful, mm -hmm. that, uh, that he, he's, he's always on time, uh, and He never fails. Right. So we, we serve a God who never fails. Never fails. Let's, enter, let's introduce our guest today, Brother Dan Houghton, and uh, Dan, President of Heart. That's right. And uh, we've been knowing each other, I was saying right before, since when? 19, 1985. 1985. And so how long have you been with Heart Research? We've been with Heart Research since 1988. So it's been 30 okay. years for us wow. out in California with Heart Research. Okay. And God has been very good to us, and we're grateful. And so we've enjoyed our ministry tracking along with uh, 3ABN ministry. We've always been very proud of what's happening, and thank you for having us on today. Well, we, we're glad that you're here. We actually met in 1985 in Big Sky, Montana. <laughs> and any of you hearing some of the miracle stories of 3ABN, and that's where it started, was back. And, you and Karen were there. Yes, we and were. And you were, I think, doing the recording and of all the, the programs, and we were just there. Someone paid our way and said, you need to go out to ASI, and, and there's a lot of people tell your story, and we did, and the Lord blessed. But uh, I we've had been... the privilege of recording that first story you told at Big Sky. Yeah, that's right, and I think not too long ago, I hadn't heard it in about 20 years or 25 or longer, and Kay Kuzma sent me, she had one of the cassettes. That's... She sent it to me. When I listened to myself, I said, I wouldn't have given to me because when I listened to this big story, the guy's going to build a TV station to reach the world and you have nothing and you, 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 know, you, you don't have the education or money or the background and you're asking people to, to support you. I said, I don't think I'd have given to him at all. So anyway, we're glad that you're here. Then we have uh, Brother Larry Blackmer and from... He's a vice president of the North American Division. Mm -hmm. And Brother Larry, it's so good to have you here today. You. Is this your first trip to 3ABN? It is. Okay, let's don't make it. It's not going to be your last, I hope. That's right. So we want to get you here. We so appreciate you coming. And today we've got an exciting topic, and it's on the Three Angels' Messages. But to be able to work with laymen and the church uh, together That's is right. great. And we have another Larry today, Larry Hyde. And uh, Larry, tell us where you're from. I teach sciences at Columbia Adventist Academy in Battleground, Washington. And to help those who are geographically challenged, right across the river from Portland, Oregon. <laughs> okay, that's a long ways. We're glad, glad that you're here today. It's good to and, be here. Uh, Br Brother Dan, we want to talk about, I want you to take us back. Something has been, ha there's something in the air. There is right? something in the air. There's something exactly in the air. Right. And I got a phone call a few weeks ago. I think Garwin McNeilis first called me. Yeah. I talked to you, I talked to 
a number of people. Mark Finley's involved. Yep. It, you know, so many people, and I love God's timing, don't you? Amen. When God's in it, there's no denying it. And so tell us what happened. Take us back. Okay. I know you have a little video and some pictures too, so whenever you're comfortable, All right. we want our folks to get as excited as we are. Hey, thank you, Danny. You know, it started back, uh, I got a phone call a little over a year ago. Um, a couple of my friends, including Rusty McKee, were sitting down and brainstorming, and they were concerned over the fact that the three angels' messages didn't seem to be very um, prominent. prevalent, prominent among uh, college students. It was specific mm -hmm. college students. And these two guys said, we were trying to brainstorm how we could actually change that. And we wanted to see if you'd get involved with us. So they called me, and so we spent about 30 minutes on the phone. And initially, from that first phone call, I started thinking, hey, we got to be a little more sophisticated. And I started, we actually created a script for a, 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 one of these whiteboard animations. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Nothing was working, it just seemed like. And then, um, fast forward to June 15th of 2018. I was driving between Sacramento Airport and Weimar. And I'm on the phone with one of my friends. And we're talking and saying, you know, I, I, this is not working. I haven't got this right. Started talking and, and, and this, his name is Brad. And he said, listen, I watched this movie, Hacksaw Ridge. Mm -hmm. And I saw a young Desmond Doss crawl up on the piano in their home on the set there when that movie was being made. And this was a real story that happened. This was a real mm -hmm. representation. He was looking at a picture of the Ten Commandments. Mm. And on that Ten Commandments, he was, they were showing him going down each one, the one that said, Thou shalt not kill. Mm. And in the conversation I was having with my friend, he said, You know, a piece of art on the wall, this can happen. You know, look at the impact mm. it had on Desmond Doss. Mm. So all of a sudden, things started to click in my mind. Of course, you know I work with Nathan Green. We do all of Nathan Green's artwork, mm -hmm. which you have some of it here in your, in yes. your studios. Um, and it's all over the world, by the way. I go every place mm -hmm. in the world, and there's Nathan's artwork, which is wonderful. We're grateful for that. But all of a sudden, the idea clicked. Hey, we could do these posters. And the idea was, how do you put the message on a piece of art? Mm -hmm. We got the idea, hey, let's ask our friend Mark Finley. Okay. Okay, let's say, I want you to think about Mark just talking to um, your 10-year-old granddaughter and explaining in a few words what each one of these messages are about. And it clicked in my head, and I said, okay, we can do this. And we began, and once we made that decision, God opened every door fast. Mm -hmm. called my friend Larry Blackmer at the North American Division and said, what do you think if we could get these to every classroom? He said, L I'm in. He wrote a cover letter so it could go when we mailed it. Mm. We chose not to go through a process of asking the schools if they wanted it because that was going to take months to get that done. Right. We just sent them. Okay. Wow. So, and we were trying right, to make it. sure we got them done before the big teachers convention. Every five years, Larry, you have a teachers convention for every mm -hmm. teacher in North America. We wanted to showcase it there and we did. Mm -hmm. But God worked that out. And then I get to ASI, Danny, and we were not on the program. You know how hard it is, right. even for us, some of us mm -hmm. who have been in leadership, yeah. to get on the program. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. But because somebody canceled, okay. Steve Dickman came and said, Dan, somebody's canceled. Would you come on and do an interview with me Sabbath afternoon about this project? <laughs> okay. Again, God's yeah. working. Right. And so um, we did that. And I think uh, at, that, at that time, I had Rusty McKee there, and he was sharing the original concept and this might be a really good time to and, roll the And Rusty, Rusty McKee with McKee Foods. Yes. So a lot of people might know even better than that, Little Debbie. That's right. He's Little Debbie's brother. Little Debbie's brother. <laughs> okay. There you go. But I want, okay. us, I want us to roll and see him describe okay. at our ASI interview mm -hmm. sure. how this really started. Well, so on the Sabbath afternoon, I love taking hikes in the, in the mountains right there in Collegedale, right next to Southern Adventist University on these beautiful trails. And when I see these young folks that look like college kids, I'll ask them, hey, do you guys go to that college over there? And they'll say yes. And then I say, oh, then, then are you Seventh-day Adventist? And they, they, they say yes. And I go, oh, I got some more questions. I said, do, do you guys believe that, uh, or are you guys, do you guys believe that you're a Protestant? And there's a pause. <laughs> and most say yes. And then I say, oh, fantastic. So what are you protesting against? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> what I'm hoping to hear one of these days is we're protesting anything that is not biblically true. Amen. Haven't heard that yet. 
Well, then I still got more questions. And I say, okay, so as Seventh-day Adventists, 1 John 4, 8, you believe God is love in everything from, from everything in His Word and what He's done in the past, today, and forevermore. Is that right? Yes, solid answer. And I always love hearing that. Well, then here's my final question. Now, don't Adventists have this first, second, and third angel's message? And it's, it's for the last days. It's right before Christ comes. And um, could you share that with me? And more importantly, share it in a way that I hear God's love so, so it draws me to that message. And there's a long pause. Hmm. A dozen years, many of us, and these students have Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. Why doesn't this flow just from our heart? Hmm. Wow. Good so, Danny, questions. that's that's where it started, mm -hmm. rusty out talking in the hills around Southern Adventist University mm -hmm. and realizing that there just was an unfamiliarity. Mm -hmm. We know we heard mm -hmm. the words, even they may have watched yes. 3ABN, yeah. they hear the words, but what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And specifically, there's one more piece of this that really uh, has come home to me, and that is, who is the God that is sending these messages? Okay. okay who is this God, mm -hmm. and why is He sending them? And so before I jump to, to Larry and the North American Division and how we got the project going, I just want to make sure I, I make sure I get this point in, Danny. And that is that this God of love is so anxious to, have, to not be separated mm -hmm. from his creation forever. And he knows that corruption is destroying the planet mm -hmm. and earth. The time is running out. And if some people don't make a decision for him, they're going to be mm. separated from him, from him forever. Mm. And so sometimes they may come across a little stridency, a little urgency, just like if your kid's running across the street and the car's coming and you mm -hmm. don't say, well, right. Johnny, please come back. You, know, <laughs> you, you give a good signal. Sure. But the love that is in these. And so we decided we wanted to convey the love and we wanted to reactivate an interest mm -hmm. in the kids mm -hmm. and in their parents mm -hmm. and anybody else. If, if we could accomplish through this project a renaissance in okay. the Seventh-day Adventist Church of studying and examining and making part of the heart search and the heart mm -hmm. cry, the three angels' messages that God mm -hmm. has given to us, we'll consider this to be a fantastic success. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. So anyway, I call Larry and say, Larry, how can we get these into all the schools? If, we, if I have the ability and we have funding available to mail them and get them there, what do you think? So as we talked, we knew the teachers' convention was coming. And I'd have um, 6,100 of my closest friends joining me in Chicago. <laughs> um, we knew that this was an opportunity that we had. Mm -hmm. And so we used that opportunity to share the posters in the exhibit hall. Uh, Dan was there and Karen was there and they, they put them up and teachers could come through and see them. Not knowing that when they got back to their classroom, a set of posters would be waiting for them. Mm -hmm. And so we mailed them in time so that when they came back from teachers convention in their classroom would be a set of posters. Nice. Okay. And teachers were excited. Um, it's our opportunity to to meld this um, message back into our, our Bible curriculum. We have a new mm -hmm. Bible curriculum, Encounter Bible, in which it's a, a strong um, core message of the Adventist Church wrapped mm -hmm. in the, a relationship with Jesus. Good. And so this is a, another opportunity that we have to, to push this message back into our Bible curriculum. Okay, so all of a sudden it's going from just Rusty's conversations to you, then to Dr. Blackmer, North American Division, and you are now getting it into the schools. Mm -hmm. But then we have the teachers because the teachers have to be supportive. That's right. So, Larry, and uh, we have two, so we're Dr. Larry here and Larry. And uh, so, so how are you involved? How are the teachers, what do you see the teacher's vision? How are they to, to help support this program? Well, I think you've heard about the Bible aspect, but one of the things that I want my students as biology, as chemistry, as anatomy and physiology students to recognize is that this is relevant to them as well. And I just really see the relevance in that first angel's message when it says, it, you know, fear God and give glory to him. And I ask my students, why would we do that? <laughs> and then we go down to that next part and it says, because he's our creator, he created the heavens and the earth and the seas. And, 
and, and to just say, this is the foundation of mm. everything that we're gonna study this year. Okay. And I think a couple of things that I try to really make sure they understand is, it says, fear God. Well, what does that really mean? And when we think about it as having awe, then mm -hmm. that's what the whole thing about learning about biology is going to be about is there's this, oh, we've got this, all this stuff. And I think until you really understand that stuff, you can't be excited about it. And so for them to take that and say, okay, I'm starting to learn about biology. I'm excited about it. Now let's take that back. How can we learn about our creator through what we're learning about in biology? Mm -hmm. What's been the student's reaction to what you've been doing? I think they're always kind of a little, why are we going to Revelation 14 to start <laughs> biology <laughs> class this year? Uh, but then I think that they get it and I hope that they really see that that it's relevant to their life. Mm -hmm. You'll know more at the end of the year than Obviously. you did at the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> but we know that, that it's going to make a difference in their lives because this is present truth to give to a lost and dying world. That's right. But what I'm excited about, Dan, is the way that you're taking it and running with it and, and the church uh, is joining together because this message, I'm amazed places we go and we travel, they'll say, uh, oh, three angels used to be my daughter and I when early years of 3ABN, we'd be traveling and then say, oh, three angels. Uh, uh, well, there's you and your daughter. Who's the other angel? <laughs> and, and they think we've named after ourselves, you know, so we say they don't know anything. We're not doing our job very well, but I have a confession to make. I was 33 years old, was raised in the Adventist church. My mother was baptized the year I was born and she knew her Bible inside and out, but in 1984, in November, when I was impressed to build a television station to reach the world, you know, one that would counteract to counterfeit, uh, uh, given an undiluted three angels messages, that's the thought that came to me. And, and Dr. Larry, I had to say to myself, as a Seventh Adventist, now, I could argue with you about the Sabbath or the state of the dead, uh, even the health message, all of these things, but I said, I'm going to have to go study the three angels' messages because I've heard of them and I know, but I didn't really, and I'm 33 years old at mm. the time, so since that impression came to give an undiluted three angels' messages, so I'm guilty as being a, a, an Adventist a Christian for that many years and not really knowing that this is the, the heart of our message right. because we get sidetracked on some of these other things and we think our message, but our message is, is steeped in the love of Jesus. As you said, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell, right? I love that song. Isn't that an incredible song? So what we're doing and what you're doing and you're allowing 3ABN to be a part of this just by having you on here and of course our name Three Angels yeah. Broadcasting so Network. How, how could it not work well? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, it's really a core of the church. Uh -huh. Everything, everywhere you go, if you look at the General Conference logo, there are three schools. Mm -hmm. If you look at the NAD logo for education, mm -hmm. there are three. Mm -hmm. If you look at risk man, it doesn't matter what logo. Okay. We have built the Three Angels message into the core of who we are as a church. Mm -hmm. But yet our members don't understand the value that mm -hmm. that has for their life. So I think this uh, project and, and the, the, um, the emphasis that we want to place back on the Three Angels message, it's the last message to a dying world. Mm -hmm. It's the last opportunity that God has mm -hmm. to speak to his children and to mm -hmm. say, I love you, I want you um, to be with me, you know, I, I, I believe that the theme of the Bible, I ask this in sermons all the time, what's the theme of the Bible? And, and people say well, it's love, it's, um, it's salvation, all that's true. But I believe the theme of the Bible is that Jesus wants to reunite his, his family. Mm -hmm. He wants to be our father. He wants us to be his yeah. children. And this is the last message that he's mm -hmm. sharing with a dying world to say, come home. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to find a way to make sure that our children and our families reunite 
with that message. Mm -hmm. the, the revelation starts out, this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, and yet most churches, most churches, and I can say this publicly on the air, uh, Protestant churches, Catholic church, you name the churches, Christian mm -hmm. churches, tell you, when in fact, people that I know, they're actually telling their members, stay away from that, or that's old stuff, that's past. You don't need to study Daniel Revelation. And now, wouldn't that be a plan of the devil if there's a revealing of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that he can right. talk you out of it and say, oh, don't go to that, that stuff, and it's wild stories of beast and you know, images and all of these things, and somebody must have drank too much, you know, and, and John who wrote this. I mean, that's the way people really feel at. about it, and yet we as a church and as a people, from, from the foundation of, of our church and the Three Angels' messages through Ellen White and, and literally the people that, that came together to study from different denominations to say, wow, there's more truths here, the Three Angels' messages. So, we for years have said the public, you know, don't know and they don't understand. It's our job to get it to them. But Dan, you said something to me, and maybe it's even before we came on set, you said maybe you could explain it, that it's not just the public who's lost or does, doesn't know the message, that we have a couple of generations That's right. that have, we've been kind of losing it within, which would work great with the devil's plan. Mm -hmm. And it is. And, and Danny, one of the things I think that causes that is that the prophecies, especially in the third angel's message, it, you know, there's, there's some talk, talking about the mark of the beast and the, you know, mm -hmm. there's some heavy stuff in there. And so we've tended to shy back from that a little bit. But even in that, the love of God is there. Mm -hmm. And so you basically, just like you heard uh, Dr. Blackmer talk about here, we have, you know, a couple generations of people mm. that know about, which means that they know the name. They are familiar right. with the terminology. Mm -hmm. But as far as knowing what's embodied in it, especially that it's based on love, mm. it's not there. Mm -hmm. So we're wanting to change that. Okay, Great. bottom line, that's what we wanted to mm -hmm. do. We want to change that. And I'll come back in a little later in the program and talk about the rest of the, how this came together because it's very fascinating. But the idea of wanting to change this is what's driven us mm -hmm. in what we're doing. And I think the Holy Spirit has been pushing us. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have dreamed we were going to be going down this road and having all these pieces come together. But just as an example to show how that this has worked, we're talking about kids, but Larry, how many, how many of our kids in the Adventist world are actually in Adventist schools? About 30%. Okay, so 30% of the kids in the Adventist mm. church are in our Adventist schools. What mm. about the other 70%? Wow. There, are, there are estimated, what, how many thousands of homeschoolers estimated? Um, somewhere around 100,000 homeschool children. 100,000 mm. homeschool kids out there and kids mm. going to other schools, public schools, wow. okay? Mm -hmm. How can those kids also get a sense of what is the nitty gritty of the three angels' messages and where is the love of God in all of that? That's our objective. And here's how to show you how it, it, it has happened. Just several weeks ago, we had someone call and say, hey, have you thought about making this into a Pathfinder honor? Hmm. We've got the big Pathfinder Campery coming up mm -hmm. in just a matter of less than 10 months said, no, but that's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. Turned out that the board at the North American Division Pathfinder Group yeah. met three days later. Hmm. And we were able to put together a package with even a little that's design. A, that's a coincidence, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. a real <laughs> coincidence. And so bottom Divine line, Providence. we were right. approved. The concept is approved and there will be a new Pathfinder honor oh, that's great. in this as well. In addition to that, we have, we're putting together a curriculum. Mm -hmm. that'll go with Encounter and, and mm -hmm. there will be a 10-day curriculum. So a teacher like uh, you know, Larry Hyday here and other, another teacher we'll have on in a minute, they can actually pull this down off of the websites and have full, uh, you know, what, what would you call that? What's this? It's, a, it's a, a teacher's plan. What do you call that, Larry? What's the? The, the curriculum? Cur yeah. Well, it's the material so that yeah. they have- The resources. The resources yeah. for everything that needs to happen for oh, them to teach okay. in the regular rhythm and how they're doing that. So it, mm -hmm. they don't get this and say, well, I got to write something. Yeah. They've got it all there for them. Mm -hmm. We're in process on that. Yeah. That's, that part's taking a little longer than what I yeah. thought it would. We're going through yeah. a refining. The first mm -hmm. draft is done, but the refining is not. Wow. But we're trying to get that reversed so that now if you have all these kids in, in school that don't know mm -hmm. a year from now, how many will know? Mm -hmm. That's okay. where I get excited. How okay. many of their parents will now that's know? The, that's mm -hmm. the point. 
Okay. You know, it, it's interesting that that we only have 30% in Adventist education. Yeah. That's a, some people say that's a terrible number. That's the highest number of any denomination in, in North mm. America. So we have more kids in our schools than any other denomination mm. that has a, mm. an educational system. But that's still an indictment against who we are mm -hmm. as Christian parents um, mm -hmm. and, and a church. We can, we can share this with that 30%. And we, we, we capture those children, but we also capture their parents. Right. And we, mm. we capture their grandparents. Mm -hmm. And I have a real burden that the other 70% of our children that are not in Adventist education must have a way to learn the distinctive messages of the church. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a, a really good way to do that. Our parents have lost that. They don't understand the sanctuary message. They don't understand the three angels message. They don't understand the, the remnant church and Ellen White. How do we help all of our children right. and all of our families to, to capture the, the pertinent points? We have the Sabbath. And, and as we do research and look at, at how our families are relating to the pillars of the church, the Sabbath is holding pretty strong. Mm -hmm. But those others, the remnant church and the sanctuary right. and the three angels message and the state of the dead, Alan White, they are declining all the time. We have to find a way to help our families, mm -hmm. to help our churches. What's the last time you've heard, other than an evangelistic series, the the pastor talk about the relevance of the sanctuary yeah. to the Adventist mm -hmm. church. It's mm -hmm. not being taught in Sabbath school. It's not being taught mm -hmm. in uh, the pulpit. It's not being taught in the home. How are we going to re-engage our families mm -hmm. and our young people into the distinctive mm -hmm. messages of the Adventist church? If we lose those distinctives, then we will become mm -hmm. just another denomination that yeah. loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's important to love Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we also have a very distinct message that Christ expects us to share with the whole world. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, Daniel and Revelation actually is a staple. You know, it, it's the stabilizer for me because what I found out years ago and what I always tell people, and you've heard me say it many times, but when you understand prophecy that most churches say all that. So when you understand it, yeah. I always say we've read the back of the book and it says we win. Mm -hmm. So we should never get discouraged. Right. John and Mary goes to the, 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 you go to the bookstore and somebody buys a novel and it says, uh, on the, you read the back, back of it and it says, John and Mary rode off into the sunset happily ever after. So you take the book home, it's 200 pages. Halfway through, J John and Mary f fall off on a cliff and they're hanging on a limb, this 2,000 feet drop. You don't get discouraged because you've read the back of the book. So you say, wow, how's the author going to get them out of this jam? Spiritually, I'm traveling along in my life and I'm in this terrible jam. And all of a sudden I say, wow, how, God, how are you going to get me out of this one? You don't get discouraged. So that is the, the stabilizer. That, that, that's why the devil hates the three angels' messages. He hates the books of Daniel Revelation because... He loses. And so now with what you're doing in the emphasis to get this to our own members and generations that's lost, to see this will bring a tremendous, and as you know, a revival that's to this church. And when the people are revived, guess what's going to happen? The dead bones are, are, are come to life. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to affect our neighbors and our friends and the whole world, in fact. So that's why this is so timely. You keep mm -hmm. saying things that remind me of songs, Danny. <laughs> Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones. Yeah. <laughs> we want to see those bones come back together. And I yeah. know that in addition to what we're doing, and this is how I'm so fascinated that different people are doing different things, Three Angels Broadcasting Network has been working on a project as well mm -hmm. in this. And I love the music DVD. I love the series of, of sermons that you put together with your camp mm -hmm. meeting talking about this. And we didn't know you were doing that. Right. You didn't know we were doing no, this, uh -uh. but God was saying, okay, we're bringing things together and I wonder what will be next because we're mm -hmm. still very much a work in process. Right. And who knows what will happen, but I love the fact that you can put music together mm -hmm. with these concepts. Mm -hmm. To give the three angels messages in just a moment, we're going to switch guests. I don't know, Brother Larry, do you, yeah. before you leave, you have something else you want to share with us? I'm just excited to be part of this whole thing and to share with my kids and start that regeneration of sharing the, the message. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. What we're going to do is part of this project that Dan was talking to you called Give Him Glory, which of course is First Angel's messages. Uh, today we're going to be, it's a song written by Lanny Wolf and Yvonne Lewis Shelton, and it's called Glorious Church. And this song is deep, but what an incredible message and music. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The shining jewel of the ancient world, Babylon worshipped gods of stone. Power and pride were evil twins that ruled her heart and throne. She was likened to a harlot fornication was in the wine that filled the cup from which she drank sins of every Daniel's vision would topple given time as would nations, kings, and merchants intoxicated by her wine. The prophets tried to warn her Heed the writing on the wall. Turn from her wicked ways before the day the wrath of God would fall. Oppressor of God's people. Babylon so powerful and strong She thought she was invincible But God would prove her wrong and Filled with glory Shall descend With a shout proclaim Babylon the great is fallen She will die in sin and shame Another voice from heaven will be heard across the earth to give a warning loud and clear to those who claim to be God's church. Come out of her, my people, be not what 
partakers of her sin. For I'm coming back for a glorious church, undefiled and pure within. To him who worships me in spirit and truth, and is faithful to the end, I will say. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, it's amazing how many ways you can get the three angels' messages to the world. I just had never really thought about music delivering it in mm. such a way. And thank you, Wentley Phipps, uh, for being able to deliver. Well, oh. we've, we've switched seats over here. We Why don't have. you introduce us? We have Kim Shoemaker. We want to welcome you. Thank Kim you is a teacher at Tacoma Adventist Academy. Greenville Adventist Academy. Greenville. We, we have Tacoma Hospital near us, and so there's been a lot of uh, merging together the two over the years, and so the name gets easily confused sometimes. Well, it's in Tennessee. We, in Tennessee. We were, we're just there yesterday. We were thinking of Tacoma and yeah. Tacoma Park, but no, yeah. this is Tennessee. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Well, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. You, you've heard. I'm sure you were sitting back and you've heard what we were talking about. And uh, with Larry, we want to hear a little bit from your perspective about this project. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about it because we have the new Encounter Bible curriculum this year. And this, I think, plays into that so well. Um, we started my year, I teach seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. primarily, and we started our year talking about the war in heaven and about why all this deception and everything is going to happen mm. because of how Satan fell. And now we're into creation and the fall of man. And, and so now we're, we're able to look at these messages and say, this is how, um, th this is, this is why, this is the how, this is what is is going to be, and, and you, you have the opportunity to be a part of it and to, and to benefit so greatly from it. So we're excited about this, um, and, and it's fitting well in with what um, some of our other teachers are doing. Um, uh, one of the units in fifth grade is talking about Elijah and about God's call. Mm -hmm. This is our call. This is our call as a church. Okay. And, and teaching the students, you know, with these posters, it's a, a great visual reminder to be there, that they can see in the hall. But they the still classroom. work. The, the pictures, the posters, oh, you know, absolutely. we're so used to uh, everything on our phones and, and, and all of this. Yeah, iPads, digital. everything oh, digital. Would, so pictures still work. Oh, absolutely. I would hate to go in a classroom that had nothing on its walls. Mm. 
you know, you still, you do the bulletin boards, you do whatever because, you know, you want to engage any, by any means necessary. And this is another great tool of engagement. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Kim? It, it's, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. go ahead. It's difficult to find distinctly Adventist um, posters oh, to right. put up on the walls. <laughs> And That's so, yeah. you know, we've done a number of posters of Pioneer posters, but this is distinctly Adventist. Mm -hmm. yes. And teachers want that distinctly Adventist mm -hmm. uh, poster on the wall. Mm -hmm. So we're so thankful that, that they're available. Yeah. Kim, I know that we have a picture. We have a picture of the posters up in her school. Okay. And uh, you were telling me of the story about uh, a teacher that brought the students out to look at the posters where they were because it illustrated a point. Tell us about that. Yes, um, she had just started her new unit on Elijah and had in the, the, the kind of the catch, the hook at the beginning of the unit is, is to talk about calling. What is a calling? Mm. And, and so she said, well, what, what's our calling? What's our calling as a church? You know, and the kids brought up, well, you know, we're telling people about the Sabbath, we're doing this. And, and the three angels message, it didn't come up. But with a little prodding, eventually one student spit it out. Mm. And so she said, okay, let's take a walk down the hall. And we had the posters mounted up in our hall. And so then she's able to use those as a tool yeah. to enforce, mm -hmm. um, enforce the calling. Okay. So it's great. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Yeah, we're 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 thrilled. Those are the kind. And you look at the picture of, the, of all those kids. Those those are the fifth, seventh and eighth grade class from Greenville. Okay. And they're being exposed, and all of a sudden, it's cool again. Okay. okay? And that's a lot of times in culture. You know. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that something is being talked about. All of a sudden, people become aware of it. Mm -hmm. They start thinking about it. And the and and to me, this is simply a, a way to define how I look at my ministry, probably how you look at your ministry. Our job, Danny, is simply to create a moment for the Holy Spirit to work. Mm. That's good. our job. Mm -hmm. Any That's of us good. as human beings, we mm -hmm. create a moment. Right now, we're creating a moment in this good. production, mm. this television broadcast. Mm -hmm. These posters are creating a moment. The curriculum materials will be creating a moment. The Pathfinder thing, the, the, the glow tract that's in process. Mm -hmm. The glow tract is putting this together in a, in a package. That is all designed to create a moment. And I gotta tell you one more exciting thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. In addition to getting these posters up in every classroom, Danny, we have had donations made available to us to be able to offer each classroom teacher that applies for it. Larry, that's, they gotta apply for this. Mm -hmm. $100 for their classroom to buy materials to share this because it's wow. one thing to know about it. Okay. But it's a whole other thing to get the kids to buy. Maybe the, maybe the teacher will buy Steps to Christ. Maybe they'll buy Glow Tracks. Maybe they'll uh, hand out some mm -hmm. five by seven postcards. You know, what, what can we do? Great controversies. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able, for a teacher that applies and says, we're going to spend the money this way, there's 2,850 classrooms that if mm -hmm. all of them do that, that's a significant chunk of change, but yeah. we have a donation available. And so every classroom teacher, I want to remind you, it was in the letter when you got it, but I want to remind you that watch our website, intoalltheworld.com for the details on that, mm -hmm. but you will be able to apply mm -hmm. to get a hundred bucks to buy yeah. materials okay. so that your kids can go out and share this once yeah. they've got it in their hearts. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about the, the pictures themselves. Okay. All right. All right. Um, whenever an idea comes, Obviously, because I work with Nathan Green, a lot of times I get in on this action, but it just so happened that I already, we were already involved in it. And then I said, well, hey, what do we have available? Well, Nathan Green is booked out. Right mm -hmm. now, he's booked to 2024. Yeah. Have mercy. Uh -huh. You know, we've got major projects. He's finishing a project right now in the Days of Creation, which we'll be talking about again, I'm mm -hmm. sure. That's an awesome project. And then he goes to the Loma Linda University project we're doing for the new brand new hospital, doing a series of 12 healing miracles. So mm -hmm. to be able to say, Nathan, can you paint something on the three angels message for this idea. There's mm -hmm. no time, it, mm -hmm. this is too time sensitive. But it just so happened that our good friend Doug Batchelor in 1999 was holding a meeting in New York City. You remember that? Absolutely, we and showed it. That's right, you did. Yeah. Well, at that time he called me and said, can we create an advertising package, a handbill? And so the art that you see on these posters was actually created originally for okay. Net 99 and All Doug right. Batchelor, oh, and I okay. had it in the file. <laughs> we simply took it and revised it. Yeah. Okay. Nathan didn't have a time to touch it. Okay. okay. Mm. So we had, and again, I call a digital artist friend of mine, top-notch guy, Lars Justinen. I said, mm -hmm. Lars, I need your help. Oh yeah. 
Well, Lars just had a big project. He said, why didn't you call me last week? <laughs> and by the time I finished talking to him, I said, Lars, okay, if you're going to give me to somebody else, then I know you know what needs to be done, so you've mm -hmm. got to be sure and talk. He says, well, I do know what needs to be you're done. You're working with okay, some top-notch people. Oh, yeah. Justin did one of the, the uh, or Lars did one of my books, The Forgotten Commandment. He ah. yep. worked with those, yeah. Well, he is excellent in that arena. Nathan is excellent in his arena. Yes. Lars is excellent mm -hmm. in his. So Lars says, okay, I'll do it. Send it to me. Mm -hmm. So in three days, three days, he's taken one picture and revised it digitally so I can have a separate first angel, a separate second angel, okay. a separate third angel. Oh. All of this came together within three days. Now, if anybody mm. knows anything about the art world, <laughs> that doesn't happen to get into yeah. people's schedule, but, but Lars caught the vision as well. Okay. Then my designer, I call the designer and say, this is what I want to make a poster. You know, it's got to look this way and it's going to mm -hmm. fit in this. 24 by 36 is a size that Larry and I talked about that mm -hmm. would be standard frames, cheap frames, inexpensive frames. All that came together and then Mark Finley was out of, uh, out of country. Mm -hmm. And he was in Greece actually and he got back on Wednesday night and I knew he was coming in Wednesday night and he calls me. Mark and I have been best friends for years. Mm -hmm. He called me as soon as he got back and I said, Mark, I've got something I need you to help me with. Now that's, it's hard for me to do that yeah. because he's my dear friend and he has so mm -hmm. much on his he plate. But I, I said, we've talked about this and he knew what we were kind of doing and I said, listen, we just want you to sit down as if you were telling your 10 year old granddaughter Oh, good. And I want you to write the copy that will go on each one of these posters. And I described what it was. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, I can do that. But he said, I won't be able to do it till Sunday. This was Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. I said, Sunday would be great. Well, I live on the West Coast. He lives on the East Coast. When I get up on Thursday morning and go to my computer and open mm -hmm. my email, there it is. It's all right. He's already <laughs> written it. And it's so there. good. Now, we, yeah. a small group of us went through and edited and with Mark. Yeah. We did a couple of word changes to get it just right. All of this came together within wow. just a matter of days. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I used to own a printing company, as you know, mm -hmm. Color Press. We sold mm -hmm. that. It's gone. And so I don't have the capability to go, I can do this myself like mm -hmm. I used to. So I called Pacific Press and they said, yes, we'd love to be a part of mm. this. And so they happened to have schedule on their big 40-inch press. And we were able to work that out, and they yeah. even handled the production process as well mm -hmm. as the mailing process. Mm -hmm. So all of this just came, it was in July, which is a slow time for them mm -hmm. otherwise. All these pieces happen, then we go to the ASI convention, and I have them with me. Mm -hmm. And we get on the, the broadcast there, which right. immediately, that's the first time it ever happened in ASI, Dan. You didn't get to watch this mm -hmm. because you, when it went off air, you didn't get to see it. But after we finished that program, the first time ever in the history of ASI, we had almost 100 people rush the stage wow. to get up close yeah. to see these pictures mm -hmm. and talk about it. And that's the first time where the homeschoolers came up, Larry. I, I hadn't okay. even, this had been moving so fast that we hadn't had time to think about some of these things. And the, mm -hmm. this lady says, when can we get them for homeschools? I said, right now they're only available, you know, for this, mm -hmm. these classrooms. I mean, we were peddling hard to get that done. Mm -hmm. right. But we now started thinking homeschools. And then when Larry tells me, 100,000 mm. homeschoolers in the Adventist mm -hmm. Church in North America. We've got to help those guys mm -hmm. and, and give them opportunity as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. So all that happened. Then the curriculum, we start working on the curriculum. The first draft is done. We're working refining that. Mm -hmm. The glow track, I call, I call Ern, uh, um, Nelson Ernst. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, would you guys be interested because we're going to want people to hand stuff out. Right. They said, yes, we'd love to do that. So I have made a deal where they're going to be able to put the same art Mm. on a glow track oh, okay. on the three angels nice. messages and that'll yeah. be out by the end of the year a beautiful little highlight you know people don't yeah. realize it's harder to write something short than it is long oh yeah mm. okay and you're getting this down to 1200 yeah. words but see i'm thinking yeah. of kim and her classroom okay. i'm thinking of larry in his classroom and and thousands of others mm -hmm. larry yeah. that these kids can inexpensively and we're even going to provide the seed funds for them to start okay. to buy these and hand them out so that we're actually doing like what you're doing with the music project, like what you're doing with other yeah. projects, mm -hmm. that we're helping to revitalize this idea. Mm -hmm. And I think the best is yet to come, that people are going to come forward, mm -hmm. that God is going to bring, that'll say, hey, have you thought about this? Mm. And, and who knows, this is not ours. This mm -hmm. is God's, yeah. Yeah. and we're just humble instruments in His hands, and who knows what He will make Amen. out of this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our time is really running low, I think. Ooh. Did we want to show a video yes, of we do. Mark Finley? Yes, we do. Thank you. All right, let's, let's hear from Mark. I've stood on the great platforms of the world in over 100 countries, 
And I've seen the power of the three angels' messages touch hearts and change lives. Let me tell you a story. The Second World War ended September 2, 1945. When the Second World War ended, there were many Jewish children whose parents had been killed in the Holocaust. These children during the Second World War as Jews were taken into Catholic orphanages. So at the end of the Second World War, many rabbis wanted to recover the Jewish children from the Catholic orphanages. When they went there, the priest said, we have no Jewish children here. The rabbi said, well, what about the names? They said, oh, those are Polish names. We can't tell the difference. There's no Jewish children here. Rabbi Joseph Kahneman went to a Catholic orphanage and was turned away in the morning. He went to some of the American soldiers who were overseeing that area and he said, please, could you get me in at least at night? So they came back, negotiated with the priest, and Rabbi Kahneman was allowed to walk through the orphanage. As he was walking through the orphanage, he began to sing in Hebrew the Jewish Shema, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. The Lord our God is one Lord. As he began to sing, a five-year-old child began to cry and say, Mama, Mama. A nine-year-old said, Mama, Mama. You see, every Jewish child knew the Shema. They had been taught it from their earliest ages. It was part of their DNA. And Rabbi Kahneman said, that's one of mine. That's one of mine. That's one of mine. What's the Adventist DNA? What's the Adventist DNA? What is it that should boil the minds of our children, that should make us a unique people? It's a message given. Revelation 14, verse 6, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to go to the ends of the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Imagine every Seventh-day Adventist young person graduating from an Adventist school, eighth grade, academy, college, coming out with a passion for mission, a passion to share the three angels' messages. That's what this project is all about. Amen. Wow, that's, that's exciting. In the mm -hmm. DNA, what's in our DNA? That's right. That's what it's all about. What we want to do, we want to put an address up on the screen right now so that you may contact Dan and see how you may get your own material. We hope you'll want to participate in the Three Angels Messages Project by helping to make these posters as well as the two-week curriculum with lesson plans and study materials available to every Seventh-day Adventist classroom. Visit their website, intoalltheworld.com, to find out more. That website, again, is intoalltheworld.com. You may also want to call them toll-free at 800-487-4278 or write to Heart Research, Post Office Box 2377, Fallbrook, California, 92088. Wow, we only have a few seconds left. This is a good program, it right? It is, it is. Look at what God is doing. He it's, is. He's amazing. He is. Uh, do you have a closing thought for us? Well, I, I think with this is, is we want it in the kids' DNA. We want this to be a part of them because it's who they are as Seventh-day Adventists and we want that end time message there so they'll be ready you know, to see Jesus someday. And uh, so any, any vehicle we have to get that message across is great. I'm thrilled. All right, Good. thank you, Kim. Dan, you got a few seconds. I'm just excited about what I see the Holy Spirit doing in this and we don't know what will be coming next but we know it's gonna be awesome. All right. We want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what he would have you to do. The address was on the screen. You may just be impressed to donate money. Maybe you can't go out, but you can donate to make sure that the tools and resources are in every Adventist school and homeschoolers, everybody that needs it. Our time is all gone for today. Until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. <laughs>